tonight's play as your star and host for the week. Hello there. I'm Robert Stack, your host for the Schlitz Playhouse of Stars. Our story is called Storm Warnings, from which I imagine it's not too difficult to gather. It has something to do with the weather. But weather isn't what Storm Warnings is really about. Far, far from it. It's about a girl named Wanda. Larry, her husband, The letter she wrote to the wrong guy. Me, Vic Flint. It's also about a hairpin and bailing wire flying outfit in Alaska with just two Air Force surplus crates to its name. It's about that and fear. Floppy Susie to Yellow Dog Tower. Come in, Eddie, if you're awake. Yellow Dog to Sloppy Sue. Read me okay, Vic? Yeah, kid. How's the weather in that miserable bone-chilling dump where you are? It ain't good here, Vic, and getting worse, I bet. Ceiling... I never needed more than 500-foot seating to set this box guy down. There won't be 500 when you get here, wise guy. I'm just up the radar and talking you in. Go on, Junior. If it ever really gets tough, then you can play hero. Uncle Vic's flying this one in on his own and no arguments. Larry, it's Vic again. He just called in from over Caribou. You seen the weather and what's blowing up? Yeah, I'll be sucked in any minute. Hey, you mean that eagle's gonna fly her in by himself? If you know him that well, why'd you pick him for a partner? Yeah, that's it. Okay, Eddie. You may get some sense through his brass-bound skull someday. Well, I hope so, Skipper. In the meantime, this baby's warming up the radar and start looking for him. Rock, you win. This time. Did you see that? Yeah, I saw the flathead set her down. Almost pushed my nose through the window. How he does it, I'll never know. When he checks in, tell him his partner wants to see him. Roger, Skipper. How's the desk, pilot? Everything okay at Fairbanks? Backed up for a half hour, but the express truck was still waiting. The load was delivered and paid for. Light jump. After what I did for today, aren't you even going to light it? Just what did you do for me today? Got that sloppy Susie back for you all in one piece. Sure, look, Papa, no hands. Oh, for Pete's sake, Vic, the barnstorming days are over past. We're in this thing for a living today. A fine living. It's not going to do either of us any good if you bust your stupid neck. Stupid neck, huh? Suppose you don't care about the stupid airplane. Well, yes, I guess I do. I can always find another crackpot partner, but where can I find the money for another plane? Let me tell you something, chum. I got to hunt your kidding on the square. Where's your sense of humor, pal? Don't you know when you're being had? Besides, if I sound a teed off, well, maybe I got a reason. You always got a reason. To you, it always sounds good. This time it might sound good even to you. I was on the phone again this afternoon with McGuire over at Alaska Associated. And guess what? He still said no. Uh-uh. This time he didn't say no. You mean he's weakening? Well, I don't know exactly what I do mean. Or for that matter, what McGuire means. But I got a tip this afternoon that they've got a shipment. Six or seven thousand pounds. It might have to be here from Keski by noon tomorrow. So I got him on the phone. And naturally, without saying anything about this particular shipment, I started talking rates and service again. A brush? This time, McGuire didn't brush me. I tell you, Vic, if we can get their business, from here on in, we're flying sunshine all the way. Son, if you put that one over, Alcan Freight Lines, and I said lines, L-I-N-E-S, plural, it's gonna give you a big fat bonus of, uh, 
Four bits and a hog's head of whale blubber. I'll tell you something, Buster. I'll take it. <laughs> oh, baby. Hey. Hey, I almost forgot. I just wanted to come out from town and have a bite with me at the airport coffee pot. Will you join us? Maybe I better not. You never get a chance to see her much yourself. Oh, forget that. How about it? Well, I appreciate the offer, chum, but... Uh, what's the matter? Avoiding us? Or something more important over in Yellow Dog? In Yellow Dog? You out of your mind? Well, then, come on. Wanda, would love to see you. And besides, with this McGuire deal half in the bag, we've got something to celebrate. I'm real beat, Larry. That trip in from Fairbanks, that's no milk run, you know. Well, you can rest. The next flight's mine anyhow. I hope you beat some sense into him, Skipper. I'm trying to right now, kid. Imagine. I invite him to a sumptuous dinner with Wanda and me at the airport coffee pot down the field. And does he jump at it? No, not Flint. I'd sure like to know what's so hot up in town to make him turn us down. So would I. Just for that, Sprat. I'm gonna spoil the Fleming's dinner and eat with him. Atta boy. This will be a real surprise for Wanda. Yeah, I'll bet. And that's about the entire score on McGuire, darling. I know it sounds like an awfully long shot, but... If you believe in hunches, it looks awfully good, eh, Vic? Huh? Oh, old McGuire? <laughs> sure, John, sure. Or coffee? Why not? We're supposed to be celebrating. Well, what's say to a toast? A toast. Here, here. To you, sweetheart. Forever and always. <sighs> it's awfully sweet, darling, but as long as we're celebrating something that hasn't happened as yet, how about this? A toast. To happiness and to the future. Payment of past favors, chum? Past favors? I thought we were toasting the future. Well, I know one thing for sure in my future. <sighs> Good night's sleep. Me too. You now this is my fifth night home in a month. Any girl who's married to a bush pilot might just as well be married to a sailor. What do you boys do on these nights away from home? Now, Wanda, let's not get started on that one again tonight. I thought we were supposed to be celebrating. But it's true. Honestly, Vic, is Larry ever home? Money, man, that's what he is, trying to make you a rich widow. And I suppose if she does become a rich widow, you'd marry her for her money. You cheerful lout. You know me, chum. It'd take more than that to wrap me up. Vic. And all that it takes, you got. Hey, Larry, Vic, phone for either one of you guys. Go down, pal. This is a job for your senior partner. Uh, get my letter. I guess you know you took an awful chance writing what you did. I couldn't help it, Vic. It's been trembling between us for a long time. I only put it into words. But what words? I've read it a dozen times a day. Before you destroyed it? I didn't destroy it. Well, Vic, you still don't have it. Sure I have. Why? Because of him? Well, who else? If he ever found that letter, he'd... <laughs> You don't know him very well, do you? I know him far better than you ever will. You've only flown with him. I'm married to him. I think you've got to destroy that letter. Where is it? There. Up there. Oh, you must be crazy. You get that jacket and... You know who that was? McGuire of Alaska Associates. Well, man? Well, the sales pitch I gave him this afternoon must have worked. I pick up 6,000 pounds at Keski and deliver to him here first thing in the morning. Yow! We're in. We're really in. Oh, Larry, I am glad for you, for both of you. You're glad? After the needles you've been giving me, I thought you'd want to bite my head off having to leave town again tonight. Oh, that... Well, darling, don't you see, if my being away tonight means that you'll get all that business, maybe later on you can hire someone to fly nights for you. Now look who's money, Matt. Sweetheart, you're being a real good sport. Hey, what happened? Where's your wedding ring? Oh, I have that in my purse. I lost one of the little diamonds in it, and I thought before I lost any more, I'd better give it to you to have it fixed. Oh. You know, it's bad luck taking off a wedding ring. I'll, uh, take it to Keski and leave it with Ted Richards. 
Give my best to Ted, will you, chum? Sure thing. Well, I gotta get out to my plane. Eddie? You take an old goose, girl? Yep. Go ahead, Larry. I'll get it. Take Wanda out to your car, see you off on the way down to get mine. It's rough. I'll see you around noon tomorrow, honey. Tonight for all the money in Alaska. Not after that letter, I wouldn't. And I want that letter, Vic, right now. I'm not taking any more chances with you. I'm going to burn it right here where I can watch. Anything to please a lady. to gas her up. Right, Eddie. Just as soon as I put Wanda's wedding ring where I can't forget it. I'll be in the office, Eddie. left it in my room. Got bad news for you, Vic. What? I ran one of those file spikes right through the palm of my hand. File spikes? File spikes through your palm? Let me see it. No, it's okay. But I guess you know what that means. You sure do. You better get down to a dock fast. Lock jaw's no fun. Yeah, I'll see the dock later, but... Uh... What I'm talking about is, well, with this flipper useless, you're going to have to take the goose girl to Kesky yourself. Your accident happened real quick, didn't it? Well, they usually do, don't they? What are you driving at, Vic? Wanda's beef about you never being home, that's got nothing to do with it, huh? You ought to know me better than that. What, are you going or aren't you? You've got to let McGuire know. It's a rush. you got plans for tonight, which, by the way, I have. So, okay, let's skip it. Put us right back where we were before McGuire's call. Well, men, 1DC3 ready to taxi. Sorry to put you all that trouble, kid, but hook a jeep onto her and drag her back in again. We're not flying tonight. Not flying? How come? I carved up my... Meat hook, and Vic decided he doesn't want to take my flight. I can't say I blame him. Who said I decided anything? But you just I said... didn't say I decided. I was just yapping, that's all. You mean you're going to take the flight? Yeah. Yeah, I'll take it. hasn't come back yet. Trying to see you. I want to talk to you. Can it wait until you get back? If I get back. What's the matter? That letter wasn't in my jacket. Oh, no. Larry found it. He knows all about us. Wanda, you there? Yes, I'm here. 
Did he say anything? No, he didn't say anything, but he did something. Faked an accident to his hand, just enough to jockey me into taking his run for him. Weather like this. Are you certain, Vic? Positive. He's no fool. I tell you he's up to something. Well, what could he do once you're in the air? I don't know. But if you hear about my funeral, please omit flowers. from Kesky yet? He did, but he never let us know. I got worried and called Kesky on the landline. He was airborne at 0145 hours. Three o'clock. Hour and 15 minutes. Well, weather being what it is, I ought to get him back here in about, uh, about an hour. Tell you what, kid, is the coffee pot still open? Should be. You look beat. Why don't you run down, get yourself a cup of java, and bring me back one. I'll take over your radio shack meanwhile, just in case. You sure it's all right? Sure. If you hear his engines anywhere near here, run back on the double. Thanks, Skipper. Goose Girl to Yellow Dog Tower. Goose Girl to Yellow Dog Tower. Come in, please, Eddie. Abel, Charlie, Nan, are you reading me? Abel, Charlie, Nan, Yellow Dog Tower. This is Quentin Goose Girl. Are you reading me or should I change frequencies? Yellow Dog Tower to Goose Girl. Abel, Charlie, Nan to Alcan DC-3. I'm reading you, Vic. I'm reading you. Over. My last fix was Truchus, but I'm in the soup. Have been for 15 minutes. I'll go down and get on. Over. No can do. It's sucked in everywhere. How low? Two feet under the runway. But don't worry. I'll talk you down. Partner. Partner. I read you right, that's not Eddie Patrick. Come in, please. Your reading is good. This is Larry. Where's the kid? Where's Eddie? Don't worry, everything's all right. I sent him out to get some coffee. Maintain your present heading of 040. I repeat, 040. You hear what I hear? Probably Vic. Back early, must have had a tailwind. And you're here. Not for long with Larry on that radar. On the downwind leg, I can probably make him time. I repeat, new heading for base leg approach. Stand by and acknowledge. Roger. Standing by. Change heading to 130. I repeat, change heading to 130. 130. Where the devil is Eddie? Eddie will be here. Now relax and fly that plane. Descend to 150. Zero, zero. Descend to one, five, zero, zero. Acknowledge. One, five, zero, zero. You are nearing position for turn into final approach. You're completing base leg turn into final approach. Heading two, two, zero. Where the devil is Eddie? We're now intercepting glide path. In your normal rate of descent. Larry, I said, where's Eddie? He didn't get back in time. Don't worry, partner. I'll bring you down. You're on.
on course, on the glide path. Maintain present rate of descent to 600 feet and perform your landing cockpit check. I can feel it. You are 50 feet above glide path. Please correct. Where is that, Eddie? Come on, Eddie, get on that horn of me. Come on, baby, come on. You are two miles from touchdown. On glide path, but drifting left. Correct heading. Drifting left. Correct heading 220. Acknowledge. Larry, you're wrong. Please check that heading again. 220, correct heading. Immediate correction will put you right on the runway. You're five degrees off. Correct at once. That's better. 20 seconds from touchdown. I can't understand it. I just can't. It was as though Vic didn't trust me. You tell her, Eddie. 220. I kept giving it to him over and over again. Sure, you gave it to him, right, Skipper? We know. Is he gonna live? He'll pull through. Well, can we see him? Later. What happened here? Oh, just one of those foul spikes on my desk. Ran it clear through my hand. You ever hear of Lockjaw, son? Let me look at that. You wouldn't let your arm drop off, eh? Come on, young fellow, we're gonna fix that up right away. I, uh, think this belongs to you. Yesterday I got Vic's jacket by mistake. Larry doing. 